My name's Ryan Shelton. I'm a co-host on The Imperfects, the Jewish grandson of Austrian and English immigrants. And I grew up on and am now currently living on Wurundjeri country. I'd like to recognise the traditional peoples of this continent whose land was stolen nearly 250 years ago. In particular, we at The Imperfects would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was recorded, and we extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. The rich storytelling history of the world's oldest living culture is what we proudly pay homage to when we share stories on The Imperfects. This has to be part of the episode. <laughs> That's the perfect no mono dance. If there was an imperfect dance, that would be. <laughs> yeah, for those not watching, which is everyone. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm just feeling a little bit uh, exhausted today, and I just need to just, just pump myself up with some in chair dancing. And it was, it was exactly that, and it was, it was vibrant. Anyway. Yeah. Well, here we are. A, a little b- 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 bonus app. Um, yeah. To, well, I, again, this is another a b- 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 bonus m- 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 mystery app. Actually, it's not a m- mystery app. If it's a m- mystery, I'm worried because... <laughs> no, no, I know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> we're we'll each prepared something. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We've just been preparing this yeah, we episode. Have. We have. That's true. Okay, it's yeah. a mystery to our listeners. It is, like most episodes. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. I, not long ago, was... I'd love to say I read it in a book so it makes me sound uh, more learned, but I discovered this on Instagram. Uh, mm-hmm. I just saw a list and the title was 40 things I wish I'd known at 40. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big one for lists. Mm-hmm. And so I was about to skip straight past it. You're, I thought you love lists. Not really. Not as like, I'd rather read. I swear you've said video. something on this podcast about loving lists. Really? Or top fives. Oh, no, you have. No, you acronyms. No, I feel like you've said you like, like love top five things. Top Someone 10. will know. Someone will know. Someone will remember that. <laughs> yeah. And then we can prove that you're a hypocrite <laughs> <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> well, let me clarify what I meant by what I was saying just then. If I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see like a, the top five of these things, I feel like they're just trying to get my attention no. by saying top five. And I'm like, well, no. They wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone's trying to get your attention, but I feel like... Next thing you're going to say, they're going to try and keep your attention as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, mate. <laughs> Put you in the loony bin. <laughs> God. Attention economy. <laughs> oh, dude. I know everyone's trying to get my attention on Instagram. I, got, there's, I know that. But I feel like when there's a top five things, I'm like, how stupid do you think I am? I'm not mm. falling for that. Mm. Yeah. And I often do. But at the moment, I'm trying to just, I'm, I'm trying to be bigger than that. Yeah. But 40 things I wish I'd known at 40 really got my attention because so many times recently I've been asked, what are things you, you wish you knew in your 20s? Mm. And I put a lot of thought into it because it's a very commonly asked question because it's a helpful question, I think, for people who are in their 20s to hear that. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, oh, hang on a minute. This is like, I'm 42 and this is like, this is the stuff that perhaps there's something in these 40 things. It's a lot of things that I might one day write when I was 60 or yeah. 70 or something like that. So yeah. it really got my attention. And then when I read it, I, they're really, really good. Mm-hmm. And I realized that so many of them, I realized were not just, I mean, yes, they work for people in their 40s, but I just felt like the things you can hear in any stage of your life and they'll be incredibly helpful. Yeah. So I sent them on to, to Bridge and she had a look at them and said, yep, yeah, I think this would be great. And you guys have had a look at them. Mm. What I thought we could maybe do is we're not just going to go through all 40 of them. Um, although it would still be a reasonable episode, I thought what we could do is just maybe choose maybe a few honourable mentions that we just sort of mentioned and yep. then one that we want to talk about in a little bit more detail mm-hmm. um, that sort of really speaks to us. Yep. Love it. Um, so who wants to go first? Um, I could go first. The list is by a guy, we, we, we believe, we're not 100% sure, by a guy called, an author called Robin Sharma. Yep. Um, we'll post them on, on Instagram. Yep. We'll okay. try and get people's attention by posting a list saying top 40 things. <laughs> so, there, so, I mean, I, this list is so good. It's, uh, I love it. I remember, I remember when I was a kid, I used to have this little book and it was called, and it literally it was a little book. Um, and when I say kid, I mean like I was a teenager or something. But I always had it by my bed, and I don't. I don't think I ever really read it properly. But every now and again, I. It was called Life's Little Instruction Book, and it was quite. I, I saw it everywhere when I was a kid, and I reckon I got it for my birthday one year, and would often, reference like refer to it, and like oh, just get little tips about life. 
it sort of pre-self-help, actually. There weren't really mm-hmm. many. I'm sure there were, but it wasn't a mainstream thing back then. And it reminded me of that. Anyway, the first honourable mention for me was number 12 mm-hmm. in the list, which is that, um, that being scared just means you're about to grow and that frequent discomfort is the price of accelerated progress. Mm. So that one spoke to me because discomfort, I mean, I hate discomfort. Even though I know intellectually that discomfort is good, it's good for us. You know, it's good to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations because, well, we grow and we learn things and find things that maybe we wouldn't have otherwise done or mm. whatever. But but yeah, I, I think knowing that it's like it's good to be uncomfortable as opposed to what probably most of my life I felt is just that, God, being uncomfortable is bad. Don't yeah. be uncomfortable. Do anything you can to be comfortable. And I reckon the entire, like so much of the way we build the world around us is to avoid discomfort. Totally. Like physical and mental mm. discomfort. Totally. Yeah. So that's my first one. The other honorable mention is uh, number 17, which is, that it usually takes 20 years of working anonymously before you acquire the wisdom and expertise required to know what to leave out of a piece of work so it becomes extraordinary. Mm. And, I, and I reckon just just from my work, I mean, not that I've been working anonymously, but I definitely relate to the idea of it takes a long time and I don't, I'm not necessarily even there yet, but I think I'm on the curve getting to that place where I know that don't just do everything because you can be selective and curate the things that you say or um, particularly when writing and when editing your own work, for example, often I find, I don't know if you find this, Josh, Mm. when you're editing your work, but often I find it's, um, it's a case of like taking, taking as many things away as you can. Mm. So it just gets down to the essence. I know like Rick Rubin actually, who is a very famous, successful music producer uh, he often calls himself a reducer as opposed mm. to a producer mm. because he's often working with artists and trying to figure out what can, how can we reduce this down to its, to its purest form. Mm. Mm. I love that. It's yeah. incredible. So well, that, You mentioned um, Rick Rubin. I'm going to mention another producer and Tim Bartley, yes. um, who, who yeah. your best mate, who, <laughs> yeah. with, with Hamish and Andy, you guys mm. built so much together. Mm. He did my Amazon special with me yep. and he took so much of it out. <laughs> Not so much of it, there's a lot of it that came out of it. And I was like, oh, that's a... Like that's a good bit. There you go. Yeah, it is a good bit. I agree. But we're trying to. This is the essence of it right here. It's distract, mm. often distracting. Like, from yeah. The, yeah. I was like, wow, I cannot believe you've got the confidence to do that. And yeah. I, he's been doing it for twenty years. Twenty years of. Yeah. A little bit more than twenty years of creating incredible, extraordinary mm. content, mm. and yeah. I, I learned that watching him. Yeah. Absolutely, I saw it. Yeah. It's anyway. They're my honourable mentions, but um, so my number one, <laughs> number one choice. <laughs> do we need a drum roll? <laughs> You won't uh, believe what he says next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I have a drum roll? I think so. Well, there was one at one point. Press one and we'll go whenever a sound comes out. <laughs> well, <laughs> it is a drum roll, <laughs> but just a shorter I'm one. I'm expecting hey, a joke here. This. More that, of a memory, but That'll yeah, do. Okay. <laughs> so number 38 on the list of 40, that not every hour of the day and not every day of the week needs to be used productively and grinding. That's what they say. Taking naps, staring at the stars, and sometimes doing nothing are pursuits absolutely necessary for a life of unlimited beauty. So, so good. So this one particularly spoke to me, actually, because only recently I've been doing, I've been sort of trying something mm. new. Um, and this is sort of like an extension of my uh my episode at the start of the year about my switch from a smartphone to a flip phone, which mm. I call my smug phone, which I'm still using and loving. So it's sort of my continuous quest to try and be more present. Um, even with the smug phone, I found myself constantly, I found myself with like a, f- it's not, wasn't really bad, but like just a generally foggy brain, mm. just like noisy, mm. a noisy brain, kind of like the example I gave with the whiteboard, mm. you know, where yes. there's like the whiteboard's yeah. filled and and I kind of realized that I was, and, and it definitely lessened when I moved to a smug phone, um, which for those who don't know is a, just an old flip phone that does nothing. Um, and, but when I, when I flipped, when I flipped to that, um, I definitely noticed that like life was a little bit less noisy, mm. but I still felt like I was there was never really a moment where I wasn't doing something. Mm. And, you know, I feel like we've, we've spoken to people, I'm, I'm sure about this, and I've definitely read a lot about 
how we don't allow ourselves to be bored anymore. Mm. You know, we're never, you know, as, as we all know, it's like boredom is good for your imag- imagination. And like, I feel like so much of my job and what I love mm. doing requires good imagination. So I, I was like, how can I, how can I do less things? And it just occurred to me, which is not a, this is not a revelation at all, but any moment I had, I felt like just out of habit, it just became, this has just become our life. Is that every single moment had to be filled with something, even if it was already, even if you're already doing something. So it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to have a shower, but I can't just have a shower. <laughs> I'll put a podcast on and listen to the mm-hmm. podcast while I'm having a shower. Or it's like, I'm having breakfast and I'll read something mm-hmm. while I'm having breakfast. Mm-hmm. And I realized that pretty much everything other than, other than like very spe- things that require specific focus, but I was like, you know, listening to a podcast while I clean, I was, you know, had the music in the shower, um, recording voice memos and coming up with ideas while I'm walking. I was always like doing at least two things at mm. once. And it kind of reminded me of, it made me think about when I was younger and people would say when you're a kid, just do one, just do one thing mm. at a time. Mm. Mm. Just do one thing at a time and it will be simpler. You're trying to do too much. And I was like, yeah, one thing at a time. That makes a lot of sense. Mm. And so I decided that I would start. So it's sort of what it is, it's essentially a brain diet. So I've gone on like a brain diet, which means that I'm essentially putting less in my brain at any one time. Amazing. Yeah. And it'll, it's, it's, it has been actually quite amazing because there are times that are really, really weirdly uncomfortable. So if I'm having breakfast just by myself, just sitting there and eating muesli with nothing else <laughs> happening is weirdly strange. Is it yeah. like awkward even though you're just there by yourself? There's no one else there, but you're still awkward? Well, it's not awkward, but it's boring. Right. Mm. But, but that's, and the point of this whole experiment, this brain diet, is to become, more, become comfortable with boredom again. Yeah. And so like I'll now, when I walk, I'll just walk and that's it. Or if I'm driving, I'm just driving. I'm not like, unless someone calls. Yeah. But otherwise I'll be just, I'm not listening to anything or doing anything. And I'm trying to, this like brain diet is just literally one thing at a time. Mm. I mean, it's kind of like, I often think about it like my brain has a sl- like a cartridge slot and there's only one cartridge slot and every activity in your life has um, a cartridge. So it's like, if I want to have breakfast, I put eating cartridge in my head. It's kind of like the old Nintendos. You know? <laughs> Where it's yeah. like, if you're playing a game, you put that game cartridge in. If you want to play another game, you have to take that cartridge out, put a different cartridge in that plays that game. So it's like my brain is like that. Whereas like at the, for such a long time, I had two, sometimes three cartridges in at the same time. My new brain only has one cartridge slot. <laughs> And you can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> That's great. I mean, it's so good. It just makes me think we need to organise a world championships of analogies with you and Hamish. <laughs> <laughs> Hamish will definitely win. You're both very, no, it's no, just no, a superpower you both have. He is extraordinary at them. But um, I love you. that. I, I think it's a, really, uh, it's a really nice one. It's just a good visual for, like for someone to think about, you've only got one bit of machinery mm. that can operate. Yeah. One on thing one at a time. Yep. Yeah. You can only do one thing at a time. Your brain can, and I, I mean- I forget where I, I think this must have been in one of Johan's books or something like that, but it's the, I remember reading about the idea of multitasking and multitasking mm. is not something that we're meant to do. Yeah. And that multitasking was only brought in when sort of computers mm. were introduced into kind of- It was of, a term for computers. Yeah. Because, because computers could actually multitask. Yeah. And then we've taken it on as something that we should try and do in our normal life, but yeah. it's not actually something that the human brain can do properly. Yeah. I, I think that, the, I think they're both- linked the, the the point you made before about discomfort mm. and this mm. because I reckon often multitasking is done to alleviate discomfort so you put in a podcast while you do the dishes yeah oh that's you, true yeah yeah you listen to something while you go for a walk or you got to do some boring accounting stuff so you try and like have a video or like tv on or and the discomfort is usually in those situations the discomfort is often just boredom yeah and not wanting to be alone with your thoughts sometimes. Mm. Yeah, or, or the, the, the fear, the weird fear of like wasting time. Yeah. Like that, that, that actually we should be, we sh- for whatever reason, we should be using every single minute of the day to do something productive mm. is actually s- stupid. Yeah, mm. well, mindfulness has come up a fair bit in this podcast this season already and yeah. I think it's just 
it's it, it, it takes away from our ability to be mindful, which is why you're doing this whole thing, yep. which I love. And what are you noticing so far? Like what are the differences? That- Way more clarity of thought. Really? Just, yeah. just I feel like my brain is cleaner. And I feel like things that, and I feel like I'm less, things always used to, even when things weren't urgent, things, life felt urgent. Even when it was like a quiet time, it still felt like yeah. I was yeah. juggling things and messaging someone as I was doing this thing. And it felt like I was always, I don't know, trying to juggle things when there was no rush necessary. You know what I mean? I yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I've, um, I'm very good at losing my headphones. Oh, so yeah. sometimes I'm forced in, like, I, I don't know where they are right now, for example. <laughs> so now I'm forced to go on walks or if I, I don't have the option of putting them in when I'm cleaning and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. Yeah. It's like, it's a refreshing, the silence is kind of refreshing. Yeah, it's, I mean, the only way I can think about it, this is a very specific reference that Josh, you will definitely understand. So if you're watching the news and someone's talking, like the news is talking, but then there's also a ticker uh, yeah. below where there's like, and it's like, hang on. I, a I, ticker? What's a? Oh, what's you know, like the breaking, breaking news, news at the oh, bottom, yes, yeah. written across the bottom, yeah. like sort of scrolling across. And I felt like my life was like m- a lot like that. Mm. Whereas like something's happening that I'm doing, which is not necessarily a hard task. It might just be, it might just be having a shower or, you know, driving or walking. But I always was feeling, I was always pairing it up with another activity because I felt like, oh, this is a good opportunity Mm. that I can get this podcast listened Mm. to or I can read this book. And it felt like I was like, oh, this is, um, this is good. I'm, I'm multitasking. That's awesome. Mm. What I'm thinking about is that, well, first of all, our podcast and our live show is definitely reaping the benefits because your ideas at the moment are just yeah. absolutely amazing. <laughs> they oh, really yeah. are incredible. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so we're reaping the benefits. So that's great. Keep doing it. Yep. <laughs> but also it's like you're creating these, you're making all these changes in your life and you have been for a few years now, but you're making ch- little adjustments to your life that are allowing you to be more creative. Mm. I feel like this one, again, is going to, it's going to help you come up. You're, you're coming up with, more creative ideas of how to make your life better. Well, you know, it's actually, it's actually the intention actually isn't to be more creative. Actually, the intention is to be more present. Mm. But then the byproduct of that is- you're more creative. Is I'm way more creative and and, and just more engaged with whatever I'm doing. Love it. I'm definitely going to try that. Oh, I'd be interested to see. Because I'm very much a, just let's get as much done as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of person as well. So I love that. Well, I think I'm, yes, I'm getting less done but I'm having to prioritize the things that actually matter to me. Mm. And then I'm enjoying or getting more out of those things than I would have otherwise. No one's going to remember when it's all said and done. No one's going to remember how much you got done. They'll remember how present, like yeah. how, you, how you made them feel. And if you're present, then yeah, that's a pretty special feeling to have. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I, mean, I know I went on for a little bit there, but that's essentially, um, yeah, it's it's a big thing for me at the moment. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to keep doing it. But that, that number 38, that spoke to me specifically. Yeah. Josh, how'd you go? Uh, I've got an honourable mention and a and a winner. Okay. Um, Great. So my honourable mention is number eight, that the priorities I thought were most important in my youth are actually the pursuits that I'm least interested in as I mature. Mm. It's, it's a tricky one to get your head around. So the things that you thought... Yeah, so for me... I'll try and keep it quick because it's only my honourable mention. It's not my main one. But, oh, yeah. Um, sorry, we don't even care about this one. Yeah, yeah. So just move on. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Um, I think as, as you get older, your priorities and interests shift. And I think there's a narrative that we're told about which really kind of glamorises youth and how amazing youth is and being young is incredible, no denying it. And I, But I think because of that, there's this thing – a narrative of like giving up on your dreams and giving up on your hopes and the things that you thought you would achieve and wanted to do when you were younger as a sort of failure. Um, but I think what that point says, or to me anyway, I might say something different to someone else, is that it doesn't have to be seen as a failure. It's You have to mature and move past that. And I think it would actually be quite boring if those pursuits that you had the, the interests that you had and the things you wanted to achieve when you're young were the only things you ever wanted to achieve for the whole I life. Totally get me. So yeah. as you're getting older, you get interested in new things. And I think it's exciting because it says that there's going to be something in the future that I get interested in and want to achieve that I haven't even considered yet. Yeah. So I've got like a really exciting path ahead rather than holding awesome. on to mm-hmm. failed dreams of a yeah. 
of my youth, which should probably stay there and have fond memories of how great they were to just dream in the mm. first place. Yeah. Yeah. So the one I've picked as my, what are we calling these? Um, best Re- one. Best or- one. Yeah. The one that resonated with me. It was the only one that I actually got emotional. Like I, I had a, you know, when you get a little pang of emotion yes. in your mm-hmm. yeah. Um is number 40. So the last one. That life's too short to play small with your highness. Mm. Life's too short. Yeah. So as in, in fact, I won't try and guess. You explain. Yeah. Well, to me, th- that life's too short to play small with your highness. The way that reads to me when I first read it was that um, I, I reckon I spent a lot of my youth, linked to the other one actually, but a lot of time. I, I think one of the qualities I found most off-putting in other people for my whole life is um, arrogance. And I just can't handle being around arrogant people. Mm -hmm. And I therefore took on a mantra that I'm not going to be arrogant myself. There's no way I can do that. And that sort of was quite pervasive and overtook to the point where I couldn't be proud of anything or brag about anything at all. Um, And I didn't want to share my successes with other people. But then the more I did that, the more I started not be able to share any successes with myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it, I confused confidence for arrogance and I think it eroded my confidence over time and I became a very, uh, yeah, very, had a pretty low opinion of myself uh, and for a long time I couldn't think of a way to be confident without being arrogant mm-hmm. and I couldn't separate the two. Right. Um, and then it was, I think I've, I have spoken about this before, but it was the birth of my first child where I didn't want him have a dad with low self-esteem mm. this exact sentiment kind of rang true to me that i'm getting old and like mm. i'm getting through life here and i don't have i mean i do have a lot of time left but i don't have that much time left really and i'm sick of being having low self-esteem and looking down on myself and not only does my son deserve to have a dad who has a decent opinion of himself but so do i Life's too short to have a low opinion of yourself. Yeah. I think. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Beautiful. Really good. Amazing. Yeah. I can yeah. see why that got you. I, mm. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So mine, um, my honorable mentions were a really obvious one for me um, that I won't go into just because I've done it pretty much in every other episode, but, <laughs> but getting super fit would multiply <laughs> my creativity, productivity, and prosperity considerably. I knew it would make me healthier and happier but what it absolutely done has made me more creative and more productive Mm -hmm. beyond Mm. when we have an important episode to do i i've I've tried to schedule runs before like like records episode records because i just know i'm better my my brain works better after yeah more creative after i exercise so now that you say that i can remember certain times when you've sort of like come into the studio with a far different energy than normal Mm -hmm. which is which is like more like Vibrance or yeah. something. Mm. Uh, 100% guaranteed because I've been able to get a run in beforehand. Yeah. And so that's that's yeah. absolutely that, – so that's an honourable mention for me. Uh, honourable mention is a funny thing, isn't it? It yeah. comes from like a Stedfords, music of Stedfords. Is that what they come yeah, from? Yeah, it's like an First, encouragement second, award. Yeah, yeah, pretty much a musical encouragement award. Yeah. yeah, as if like 39 of these points are going to feel bad if we don't choose <laughs> <Yeah>. them. <laughs> are we dishonourable? Yeah. <laughs> what do we do? Uh, number four. There's another honourable mention. Okay. I've yeah, got yeah. a few honourable mentions here, sorry. <laughs> um, so so many of them really spoke to me. I guess that's why I so wanted to do this as an episode. But <laughs> this is a really big one for me. I'm only realising it at the moment, actually, that I'd do my finest work when I'd been working in hotel rooms and flying on airplanes yeah. rather than when chained to an office desk. I nearly chose this one. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it would resonate with you because mm. I, I, we've got like you know, the Resilience Project in here with the Imperfect Studio there. There's like five or six different office offices you can go in and work to. When I have to get something done, I've never once thought, oh, I need to. There's a couple of places I go to to do work and it's not an office. I yeah. can't get, I just, when I sit in an office and I have to write stuff, I can't do mm. it. There's a couple of places I go to. Not, I mean, airplanes, I do amazing work on, absolutely, and mm. hotel rooms, definitely. But I think that's not meant to be taken as literally as, you know, more yeah. as a, you know, a cafe for me is like a really, really good place just to do work. Yeah, and I love that as well. Yeah, yeah. and mm. so I think to me it's like 
have a think about where do you do your like actually consciously think where do I do my best work? Where am I really creative? Where do I whatever you do for work? Where do I mm. don't just go oh yeah well, every time I go to that place I work like then work from there. Like, Obviously, mm. if you're a surgeon. Um, <laughs> you know. Drag your patients into a cafe. <laughs> it's yeah. a great cafe. Yeah, Chibi. You you, 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 a bit restricted into when you're going to do, do your work. <laughs> yeah, if you have a not real job like mine where you yeah. can just go and write stuff anywhere. But oh, like golfers, Formula One drivers. Yeah, there are a few people who can't bring Fun work to a cafe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but <For> golfers. <laughs> <laughs> Taking off at Chibi. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. N- another honorable mention. Sorry, I've got one more honorable mention. Number 18. Um, I love this so much. That the humbler the person, mm. the stronger the character. Yeah, well, that's a pretty nice follow up from what Josh was talking so about. I used to have strong character, but now I'm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, I actually think that because you'll, I mean, you'll always be humble because there's, mm. it's not like, because it's, it's not like you're humble or you're arrogant. No, no, no. you're right. There's they're a, the extremes, yeah. but there's, you know, plenty of mm. middle area. Yeah, yeah. For I sure. just found like through this podcast, I mean, we've been meeting some really, really yeah. extremely successful people mm. who, not when the microphone's on because their job is to talk about themselves, but when I catch up with them beforehand, they're so much more focused on being interested than interesting. And yeah. I, there's a real, just a, they don't need to, prove themselves or to, to and I just feel like that also speaks to a very rich character mm. of just You know who this reminds me of? Who's that? You know I think of when you say that? Rack. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. For, who's been on this podcast a couple of times, but you know, from the Resilience Project, he he is that in spades. Mm. Yeah. Just extremely humble. Yeah. An incredible character. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, okay, but the but one we don't I, care about those no. because they are just honourable mentions. <laughs> so ignore all that. Effect? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, <laughs> it really sounds like a memory to me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The other ones are not even close. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even no, close no, okay, to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mine was number five on the list. There was my number one, and. When we first decided to do this, it was a week ago and I had a different, it was actually that one about the character and, and, and being humble, but something's happened over the weekend that's made me think about this one. So number five, which is my, now my number one, the good friendships are priceless treasures and that old friends are the most precious ones. And I think I've always known that friendships are priceless treasures and I've always treated them like that. Um, but old friends, that are, now I'm not saying they're most specifically the most precious ones, mm. But, I mean, the background, as you guys know, uh, on the weekend I received news that a guy who I just worshipped at school, loved him, and everyone did. The whole school's obsessed with him. Um, year above me at school, passed away on Saturday. Mm. Name is Bernie. And, when I mean, he was, <laughs> everyone looked, he, he was amazing. He was mm. good at everything. He was a beautiful looking person. He was so intelligent. And we have just, in the days after learning about his passing, I've just found myself on Monday specifically, I just picked up the phone and I just called everyone. I called so many people from school um, who I knew were close to him or knew him well. or And I was just reminded, it was such a powerful reminder of how much I love the people that I grew up with mm. and how much love I have for them. I never see him. One of the guys, um, I called his name, we known as Jogger. I haven't spoken to him in, we send each other really loving uh, messages every three or four months out mm. of nowhere. And it's the Same? jogger James White, which is oh, called yeah. jogger. Yeah. Okay. And literally he'll send a message going, I love you. That's it. And we're like, and then I'll write back you too. And then we don't mm. catch up or we don't talk. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just like it's very direct. If you mm. went through our back messages, it would just be, I love you. I love you. I love you. That's all. Mm. Day for, but we never, you know, jogger. He's an yeah, yeah. unbelievable guy. Amazing. Um, we never catch up. And I called him because in the same year as Bernie and, like I was just reminded of how much I love those people from my past and mm. these people that I was so close to growing up. And because of life, having families and, you know, you just sort of grow apart, but my love for them has not changed at all. And mm. we're all, everyone was calling everyone and I called one guy who had, he called me straight and he said, well, what? He said, what's going on? What is, you know, something happened. I've had five missed calls from, and he named all these people. Everyone was just calling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're all just calling each other. Mm. And it was just a, I'm not saying – you should value your oldest friendships as the most important. I think I don't think that's a way of doing it, but it was a really nice reminder to me of um, uh, we lost someone, a very, very special person, and 
and it connected me with people from my past and it just reminded me how special those friendships are. Mm. Um, and I think we can sometimes forget about them. And then when something like this happens, mm. you're reminded that, hey, you don't, you're not always going to pick up the phone and call that person. They're not always going to be there. There'll come a time when you can't. Yeah. Um, and, and the way we're going, me and Jogger, we've chatted on the phone once in the last 10 years. <laughs> mm. I don't know how long we'll be alive for, maybe another, hopefully another, I don't know, 50 years, but that's only another five conversations at, at the way we're currently mm. tracking. So yeah. it just reminded me that, that um, yeah, friendships are really special and the ones you've had for a long time, you've got to pick up the phone. It's so nice with old friends because I guess, especially if you've known each other as kids, you kind of know each other as kind of like your purest self. Mm. Yeah, you, you probably, especially if you've spent a lot of time with them as a kid, you haven't really. It's pretty hard to put up a front or like to be, like to wear a mask at school because it's like eventually you kind of it becomes yeah, pretty obvious yeah. who you are. Mm. So I think the people you become friends with, it's like you become friends with like the purest version of that person. Yeah, and then when you grow up, you meet people in certain maybe work environments, and you don't really get to know. You only know the real. It's person. easy to put on a facade yeah. at yeah. work, much yeah. easier. But then those old people, those old friends who you may not talk for five years, yeah. but then yeah, something happens, or it's like a school reunion, and you just dive right back into it, yeah. and it just sort of like the the momentum, it's like it just picks back up. Yeah. Mm. Well, you guys know Kim, who's head of partnerships here at the Resilience Project. Yeah. I went to school with Kim. We were in year seven together, so we've known each other since we were twelve, and she started working with us a couple of years ago. Every time I walk into the office, there's something so heartwarming just about seeing her. Yeah. So I feel like she knows me. Like she really, really knows mm. who I am. Before anything has happened, she knows me. Yeah. When I was 12, we are really good friends when we were 12. And even last year when, when you know, different things are going on throughout the year and the years, you know, ups and downs throughout the year when times are tough, mm. as they are for a lot of people a lot of times, I'd walk into the office and I just wanted to sort of be around Kim. There's something really comforting about this person knows me, yeah. like mm. who I really am and, and – um. So yeah, I've just been, I think I'm, I'm happy to have read that at age 40 because it's made me think I'm going to make a concerted effort now to stay in touch with the people who were special to me when I was a kid. Mm. Mm. Um, so I'm happy that I've read that. Shattered with the loss that we've experienced as a community, such a special person um, and he was such a connecting force. He just connected people like nothing else and, and, mm. and that's what he's doing right now. Yeah, well clearly, yeah, when, when someone like that dies and they've had such a positive impact on so many people and all those people then feel the loss so deeply they just want to connect with each other mm. and it is it can be quite yeah like you say quite connecting and yeah. it sort of speaks it probably speaks to the character of that person yeah absolutely mm. absolutely mm. um so those that list we'll put on our instagram so people because we don't really know we still haven't really worked out exactly where it came from we think it's robin sharma but well it's from a book that's from a book that we assume robin sharma wrote Potentially. But we're yeah. not 100% sure. Yeah. This would not pass as a bibliography in year six for me. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you heard bibliography? <laughs> that was so unbelievably difficult to get right. Oh, so mm. annoying because you finished, you finished your project. You're like, great, yeah. finished. And then, oh, f- <laughs> bibliography. <laughs> that took such a long, you'd always underestimate how long that took. Yeah. And then you go to uni and if you get like, you'd lose like 40% for like doing one word wrong. Like they were brutal at uni yeah, on yeah, bibliography. That's where they get you. Mm. That is, yeah, anyway, that's, that should be one of the list. <laughs> well, Hugh, Hugh I, I, thanks for yeah, finding that great. list. That was, that's like such a good list. I can't wait for people to read that because it is a brilliant list. I mean, we only presented nine out of them and I honestly could have done 30 of them really spoke to me. So I hope people can have a good look at that. No matter what age you are, it's a nice list to look at and just reflect on and maybe try and apply a few of those to your own life yeah. with someone you're close to. Yep. Brilliant. Oh, great. Fun bonus episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Not a mystery. Very well no, planned yeah, out. Absolutely. Out yeah, very unmysterious. <laughs> We'll see you in a few days' time. Bye-bye. The Imperfects is not a licensed mental health service and is not a substitute for professional mental health advice, treatment or assessment. The advice given in this episode is general in nature, but if you're struggling, please see a healthcare professional or call Lifeline on 13 1114. The Imperfects is hosted and produced by Hugh Van Kylenberg, Ryan Shelton and Josh Van Kylenberg. Our executive producer is Bridget Northeast. This episode is filmed by Andy Poole and edited by George Martin. You sit